Are you struggling to play wisely, losing too much HP, or not getting your melts on the right hits? In this video, I will share 7 advanced tips that every Risley main should know. Let's start. Risley's HP needs to be maintained to perform well, but relying on his charge attack healing isn't the best approach. The reason is that at C0 he is HP negative. His full combo will consume more HP than it will give you back, even if using his healing as soon as it's ready. Each normal will drain 4.5% HP. You can do 9 of them before the first charge attack, which means losing 40.5% HP and only getting 30% back. And this is without factoring any hit you might take and delaying your charge attack for damage optimizations. This can be okay, but only for the first rotation, and it's basically the reason why everyone is praising and looking at C1, as it basically fixes this problem, makes your rotation much easier and also increases your damage. There are two main ways to maintain your rise lead life and damage up looking at C0. The first one is having a strong one-time heal that can be done at the start of your rotation that will bring Risley's HP to full, so that when you start attacking, he has enough to work with. For example, Mika and Jin. This is a riskier way, but it enables him to lose HP and use his charge attack fairly consistently. However, you can also simply maintain his HP throughout this entire skill cast. Continuous healing like Cookie, Bennett, Sayu, Barbara will make so he can spam his normals without worrying too much about his HP. In that case, however, using your charge attacks will be very unlikely as dropping below 60% will be harder. Losing out on the charge attack damage bonus at C0 is honestly not that big of a deal as people make it seem, but ideally I find the first approach more interesting and fitting for his gameplay. When you're not melting opponents, Risley combos are really easy. You can simply spam N5 and his special charge attack whenever it's up. But based on your attack speed, you can take it even further. A 0% attack speed N5 into N4 into charge attack in a loop is the way to go. As you increase your attack speed, you can start doing N5 into N5 into charge attack instead. Keep in mind that adapting these combos to your playstyle is also important, especially when it comes to trading HP and keeping him above 50%. You can tell his special charge attack is ready by the visual clue and the red flames that will be on him. Further on, dashing as your N5 hits will make your combo faster at the cost of some stamina. When playing melt teams, using your normals will result in a melt on the first and fourth hit. This happens consistently with no attack speed buffs and with a few on, like 10 and 15%. Unfortunately, these two hits are not the ones that hold the most damage and ideally you want to be melting your N5 as it has the highest damage multiplier. There is a trick that enables you to melt your first hit and then directly the N5, and that is the N4 skip. Since it does not interrupt its attack combo after dashing, it's possible to dash as soon as starting an attack, denying that hit and skipping it completely, basically jumping from N3 to N5 directly and making sure the N5 is the melt attack. Done correctly, it will make sure his strongest hit is always melted. This can also be followed by a charge attack to completely reset the combo and have N1 melt again, which has a fairly discreet multiplier. It takes a bit of practice to get used to it, and it might be easy to screw up, but it's a very interesting way to combo his attack and make him very satisfying to play. Small tip here, Risley charge attacks are blunt attacks and will shatter enemies that are frozen, making you possibly lose up time when using Blitzer's Strayer. However, given enough Hydro application, this will not be a problem, as you can simply reapply Cryo and Hydro right away and refresh the freeze. It can be a problem when using setups that include very limited Hydro like Mona or Barbara, but it's not when paired with characters like Yellen and Zinchu. Not only Risley attacks do much less damage when below 50% HP, but they also stop generating energy particles, which can be very detrimental to a team's success, especially when paired with certain characters like Shenhe or Shanling that need every single particle to sustain themselves. His energy generation is not the greatest, but should not be overlooked, generating one energy every two seconds when hitting opponents, working both of these normals and special charge attack. Non-special charge attacks and plunge attacks do not generate any energy ever. Shenhe is a great way to boost Risley's damage, but unfortunately their synergy needs some adjustment to fully come online. A character like Ayaka, for example, is able to switch out during her on-field time to refresh Shenhe's skill and use it twice per burst. Risley, on the other hand, does not want to switch mid-fight, but it's possible to rotate in a way that makes it so that he can still utilize two buffs, and that is by having a 25 seconds rotation. That means starting with a Shenhe top skill, use the 10 seconds cooldown to set up your team, and burst with Risley, then, before taking his on-field time, casting a whole skill for the new stacks that will be used during his normals and charge attack skill. When choosing your weapon, remember that Risley really likes most 5-star options, but a few 4-star options that people tend to try to use on him 
are not as efficient as they seem. The first example would be Solar Pearl, which cannot be activated by this skill and can only buff your normals and charge attack after using the burst. This translates to always having to have enough ER before your skill for a mere 6 seconds of buff. If you intend on using it, remember to normal attack once before the burst to buff it as well. Another often considered weapon is Witsit, which on average will perform really well, but in practice might lead into slower runs when getting the wrong buffs, especially if not in a melt team as the elemental mastery buffs becomes totally useless. The current free-to-play weapon from the event is really solid and so is the Fontaine Craftable, and I would pick those over any other 4-star weapon that I didn't mention. All in all, I think Risley is not a must pull, but a very solid unit for people that enjoy his personality, look or playstyle. He can be a monster in the abyss with enough investment and care. His C1 is in my opinion a bit overhyped, but the comfort it provides is definitely there and should be considered by people that want to further invest into him, even before considering his signature weapon, especially if already owning Wanderer's weapon or similar choices. And that is all for this video, thank you so much for watching so far, leave a like, a comment or a sub if you feel like this video helped you out so that more people can find it. I will see you in the next one.